Hey, welcome back to Jolie Farms. This is Joe. Want to thank everyone who subscribed to our videos. We really appreciate it. Appreciate all the likes and the wonderful comments. Hope you'll keep doing it. If you haven't subscribed yet, this would be a great time to do that. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about water sources in Ecuador. We've talked a little bit about water in a previous video, but now I want to talk about six different water sources and what you might want to consider before building or buying a property here in Ecuador. So uh, first I want to say that, you know, water in Ecuador is really plentiful in most areas. Um, there, you know, if you're from another country and you're planning on living here, it's important you understand that some of these water sources here can uh, be affected by seasonal changes. And in southern Ecuador, particularly where we are in Vilcabamba, we're affected by the dry season. So, you know, from about June to October, it gets really dry here. And uh, this year has been an exception. We've had a, a fairly wet year. Uh, but when that happens, things like springs, et cetera, can dry up. Um, so, you know, it's regional and you, you need to know about the area you're living in, um, what to expect there. And the best way to do that is talk to neighbors and professionals in the area. Wherever you decide to build or buy, I recommend that you have at least two sources of water. Um, it's just a good rule of thumb. So some parts of Ecuador receive so much water, it can actually be kind of dangerous. Um, landslides, we see uh, every year in the Cajas National Park that um, people are killed by landslides. Um, landslides down here in southern Ecuador, uh, they do happen and we've seen houses be taken out by landslides and we've certainly seen a lot of road blockages in our short five years here. So uh, water can be destructive and um, it's a necessary thing, but it's also can be a very destructive thing. So one of the things that happens when we get a uh, really heavy rain here is sometimes a road will wash out between here and the airport in Catamayo. So you can be on your way to the airport, run into one of these roads, road slides and uh, landslides and not be able to get to the airport on time. So it's best if you're driving yourself, at least call a taxi driver and ask their opinion on the roads. Taxi drivers have to drive it every day, so they usually know the road outages. There is a, a national um, weather uh, channel here, and you can get that on, on your Telegram and, uh, or I think even on WhatsApp. And then you can kind of be kept up to date on road closures. And of course, you know, sometimes it's not just due to water. Sometimes it's a, uh, it's a protest, and so that'll be on that national website as well. Okay, so the first source of water I want to talk about is well water. So if you're low in a valley, you know, and you live somewhere somewhat close to a river, a well may be a great option, um, but expect them to be expensive to drill. Just like in the U.S., wells are very expensive here, the labor is cheaper, but everything else is going to be priced about the same. We've had some engineers on our property who looked at, uh, you know, possibly drilling a well here, and they told us it was just not at all possible. We're too high in the mountain and too much rock, and it just, uh, it just would not work. Um, so at least, you know, we checked that out. They also told us that uh, drilling in a low area, you know, where there was water, would probably be at least 100 meter uh, depth to the well, and uh, that would cost approximately $10,000, depending on the area and access and things like that. Context is everything. So, um, you know, depending on your area, maybe there's water at 25 meters. Um, whether it's drinkable or not, that's, that's another uh, question. So the second source I want to talk about is springs. So there are lots of springs here in Ecuador, and the mountains kind of push up water, if you will. Um, and so these are also subject to the seasonal changes. They can dry up. We have a spring on the property on the mountain behind us that um, from a guy I talked to that used to run cattle up there for years, he said, it's never dried up. Um, that spring I've been offered by that neighbor who owns that property, uh, the opportunity to hook into it and run a... Uh, a line over here and I priced that out and unfortunately it really cost prohibitive about three grand just to run the pipe over here and then I just have spring water which wasn't necessarily potable 
um, but it'd be good for irrigation. So we elected not to do that. We went into uh, other sources for our water. So one thing to note is if you do buy a property that has a spring on the property, um, you need to understand that that spring does not belong to you, even though it exists on your property. Here in Ecuador, the water belongs to the people. So in order for me to hook into a spring on someone else's property, I would have to go to the pr province here and file some paperwork. And then it's legal for me to do that. It's a very inexpensive um, piece of paperwork to, to file there. And so uh, that would allow me to hook into my neighbor's spring, whether he gets permission or not. Of course, it'd be better always to ask first. But it's important to note that the water belongs to the people. Now, the third source of water is what we call a junta or a water cooperative. Um, this would be like a water board. So our particular water board, we get our water from the Podocarpus National Park, and that's way high up in the mountain, several miles from here. And it's from a river up there, pristine, pristine river in the park. The whole valley gets their water from there. We are on a separate line from Vilcabamba itself, so our water comes in t into some great big tanks up there on the mountainside and then over to our tanks and to us. So um, we don't have any treatment done to our water and uh, it comes in here natural. It's actually potable, it's ready to drink. Um, we do filter it, we do some things to it just to ensure our health. So um, one thing about the cooperatives I want to explain is that you're allowed, depending on which cooperative you belong to, you're allowed either 20 meters squared per month or 30 meters squared per month, depending on which cooperative you belong to. So that's, that's a lot of water. Now that's at the base price you get the, at 20 or 30 square meters of water. So that runs us a month, usually we're about $9 a month. Sometimes we're only $3, sometimes we're $15. Um, it just kind of varies as to when they read the meter. Um, but we've really only gone over that 20 square meters one time, and that was during the lockdown. And it was back then we didn't understand that if we went over that 20 square meters, everything was three times the price at that point. So whatever your base rate is, then it goes up three times. So that's a considerable amount. Now, we've never exceeded $100 a month, even when we were watering, you know, using the Junta water. It is not legal to use the Junta water for irrigation. We didn't understand that going into this. So um, people do. A lot of people use it. Um, and if you're using a small amount, I don't think anyone will ever say anything. But if you're consistently into that triple rate area, um, yeah, the Junta might come out and question you about your water usage. So uh, the Junta water is very inexpensive, and it's, um, you know, it's, fairly reliable. We have had as much as a week or two with no water here. Uh, fortunately, we have water storage tanks and we go through about, I would say, 2,500 liters per week um, because we have, again, multiple houses on this property. If it were just you and maybe a small family, you might not would go through that much, but um, we like to take showers every day and we use a lot of water. So 2,500 liters a week is about what we would use. The fourth source of water is canal water. Now the canal water, again, starts up in the Podocarpus Park up on the mountain and it comes down in this series of intricate canals all through the valley. And we don't have access to that where we are. There's been a, a push to try to get some canal water up here, but as of yet, that's not happened. But the rest of Ilcabamba does have access to canal water. The canal water, let me help you understand, is not potable. It starts out as pristine. However, as it travels through the canal, people tend to wash their clothes in it. Uh, they bathe in it, wash dishes, whatever it might be. So by the time that canal water gets to you, it may not be safe to drink. Um, however, not to say that you couldn't do some filtration and things like that. Now, the canal water um, is not free you do have to join that canal and uh, you'll pay a little fee up front and I think an annual fee every year. I don't know what that fee is. It's probably different for every neighborhood, um, but there is a fee for it. It's not a lot, but 
need to be aware of that. Um, canal water is, you know, a great option for irrigation, and it's a, uh, you know, a great option maybe if you have no other way of getting water to your property, you could put that into storage tanks, filter it, um, use UV filtration, etc., and make that safe to drink. The fifth source of water I want to talk to you about is river water. Um, there are a lot of people here in Ecuador who still use water from the river. And I'll say many of the rivers here in Ecuador are absolutely pristine, way cleaner than the U.S. waters. Um, however, the river that runs down to the middle of Vilcabamba, I have been told, is pretty polluted. I have seen people taking baths in there, washing clothes. Every weekend you'll see that along the riverbanks. So I think it's a possibility that it's polluted. We've heard there's some raw sewage being pumped into it. I have no verifiable information on that. Um, but that's, you know, rumors that we've heard. I would still say it's probably cleaner than anything you're experiencing in the U.S. So the river water is um, available to you, and you can use a ram pump, which doesn't take any electricity or power to run. Um, you can look on YouTube for how to build your own ram pump. Or you can use electric pump or gasoline pump and pump water to your property. Uh, that's certainly available to you. The sixth uh, source of water I want to talk to you about is rainwater collection. Now, we do rainwater collection here on this property. Um, as I've mentioned to you before, we have around 30,000 liters of uh, rainwater collection here. We also have a small pond that we collect rainwater in. So we've got a lot of rainwater and we use every bit of it during the dry season for irrigation for our gardens and for the landscape etc here. If you want to um, buy a property that has no other water you could effectively gutter the home and gutters run somewhere between 10, 10 and 15 dollars a meter uh, to install gutters on your home and once you gutter that water you could put that into storage tanks and then filter it use UV filtration, etc., and then make that uh, potable water. Rainwater is one of the purest forms of water. It's very, very neutral in pH, very soft naturally, so it's a great water to use. Um, I can't say that as it runs off your roof that it's not going to get polluted. It certainly can, and thus the need for the filtration. So I think uh, rainwater might be a great option. I know some people who are off-grid who use only rainwater and who use solar and they seem to be very happy. Not a huge family, but, you know, a couple and one child, and, and they seem to do very well with their rainwater collection. I do want to explain this. Whatever option you choose, um, if it's for drinking water, I, I'm going to recommend that you do quarterly testing of that water source. And there are places here in Ecuador to do that where you can send that water to. And so uh, quarterly testing is especially important for heavy metals and for uh, fecal coliform. Uh, you want to test for those two things. So there are plenty of people here to help you um, to discuss the water issues and how to best utilize water for your family, how to best bring it to your property. Um, I want to be very clear that we don't have a problem with water. There's water everywhere but you can buy a property here that may not have access to it, and it may be very, you know, not cost effective to bring that water to that property. So make these decisions about water before buying the property. Make sure you do your due diligence. Uh, make sure that you understand how you're going to accomplish these things. And the best way is to have a qualified professional with you um, who can uh, discuss the different options for each piece of property. All right, due diligence, it's important. Here in Ecuador, we have a saying, el agua es vida, which means life is in the water, or water is life. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please let me know. Have a blessed day. <laughs>